JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFT's weekly market outlook webinar for uh, the week May the 17th until May the 21st. I am Harlan Bospisuros, senior market analyst here at JFT, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, this week will be another one with no central bank decision on the agenda, but we do have uh, the minutes from the latest uh, uh, from the latest RBA and FOMC meetings, with uh, central bankers around the globe uh, suggesting that any short-term surge in inflation is likely to prove to be temporary. CPIs from the UK and Canada may also attract special attention. So let's take things from the beginning. Monday appears to be a relatively light day in terms of economic releases, with the only one worth mentioning being the New York Empire State Manufacturing Index for May, which is forecast to have declined slightly to 23.90 from 26.30. Now, on Tuesday, Asian time, the RBA releases the minutes from its latest monetary policy gathering, at which officials kept policy unchanged, but noted that despite the strong economic recovery in Australia, Inflation pressures remain subdued in most parts of the economy, and that at the July gathering they will consider further bond purchases. With uh, that in mind, we will scan the minutes to see how strong the likelihood uh, for further easing is. But in our view, Wednesday's wage price index and Thursday's employment data may prove more determinant on that front, and thereby bigger market movers uh, for the Australian dollar. Japan's preliminary GDP for the first quarter is also coming out, and the forecast points to a 1.2% quarter-over-quarter contraction after a 2.8% expansion in the last three months of 2020. This will take the year-over-year -year rate down to minus 4.6% from uh, plus 11.7%. Later, during the European morning, we have the UK employment report for March. The unemployment rate is expected to have held steady at 4.9%, while the net, change in employment is, the net change in employment is anticipated to show that the UK economy has lost 150,000 jobs in the three months to March, after losing 73,000 in the three months to February. Average weekly earnings, both including and excluding bonuses, are expected to have accelerated uh, somewhat. Although more job losses may result in a pullback in the British pound, we believe that its traders may prefer to pay more attention to the inflation data due out on Wednesday. From the Eurozone, we get the second uh, GDP estimate for the first quarter, which is expected to confirm it, uh, the initial print of minus 0.6%, as well as uh, the bloc's employment change for the quarter, for which no forecast is uh, currently available. In the US, we have the building permits and housing starts, both for April. Building permits are expected to have, uh, to have increased somewhat, but housing starts are forecast to have slightly declined. Now on Wednesday, during the Asian morning, Australia's wage price index for the first quarter is due to be released, and expectations are for the quarter over quarter rate to have ticked down to 0.5% from 0.6%, uh, something that is likely to keep the year-over-year -year rate unchanged, unchanged at 1.4%. As we already noted at its uh, latest meeting, the RBA said that they could uh, consider further bond purchases at the July meeting, 
and a small slowdown in wages may add to the chances for something like that uh, taking flesh, especially if we do get the soft deployment uh, report on Thursday. During the early European morning, the UK CPIs for April are due uh, out. The headline rate is forecast to, to have doubled uh, to 1.4% uh, year over year from 0.7%, while the core one is anticipated to have ticked up to 1.2% year over year from 1.1%. At its prior meeting, the Bank of England decided to scale back the pace of its bond purchases, although it added that the monetary policy remains accommodative. Despite officials noting that any spike in inflation is likely to prove to be, is likely to prove to be temporary, combined with last week's uh, better than expected GDP, industrial production, manufacturing production data, this may add more credence to the bank's uh, decision and uh, may help the pound gain further, especially if Friday's retail sales for April uh, for April are also on the decent side. Eurozone's final CPIs for the month are also coming out, but as it is always the case, they are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. We get more inflation data for April later in the day, this time from Canada. The headline rate is expected to have surged to 3.1% year over year from 2.2%, while no forecast is available for the core rate, neither for the trimmed mean one. With the employment report for the month disappointing, uh, disappointing most policymakers around uh, and most policymakers around the globe supporting that any spikes in inflation this year are likely to prove to be temporary, and the Bank of Canada governor saying that the loony has strengthened beyond their expectations uh, and that if this continues, it could impact their policy decisions. We believe that investors may have. Um, uh, we believe that investors may have already started questioning whether the Bank of Canada acted correctly at its last gathering when it scaled back its uh, QE purchases. Thus, we don't expect a jump in the headline CPI to boost the loony match. For that to happen, we may have to see the current trimmed mean rates uh, jumping as well, which could mean that the inflation surge is not due to transitory, due to transitory factors uh, after all. Later in the day, the minutes uh, from the latest FOMC gathering are due to be released. At that gathering, officials kept policy untouched, maintaining their dovish stance. They reiterated the view that any short-term spikes in inflation this year are likely to prove to be temporary, with Fed Chief Powell uh, stuck sticking to his guns, uh, saying that uh, the economy is a long way from their goals and that it's uh, not time to start uh, discussing uh, quantitative easing tapering yet. We will scan the minutes uh, for more uh, details on policymakers' view, but uh, bearing in mind that inflation skyrocketed more than expected last week with the core rate searching as well, we will treat the minutes as outdated. Fed officials who spoke after the inflation data appeared slightly more skeptical, with, with Vice, uh, Vice uh, Chair Clarida saying that if inflation proves not to be transitory, they will use their tools to bring it under control. Therefore, we believe that market participants will focus on what uh, Fed officials have to say after last week's uh, CPIs. If more of them appear, skepti uh, appear a bit skeptical, the stock market is likely to retrace again, while they use the US dollar may strengthen. On the other hand, if the consensus among them is still, on the, or is still that uh, the inflation spike will prove to be temporary and that it is too early to start discussing withdrawal policy support, risk appetite is likely to prevail in the market. Equities and other risk-linked assets are likely to gain, while the US dollar and other safe havens are likely to come under renewed selling interest. Now on Thursday, the only top uh, tier data point may be Australia's, um, Australia's employment report for, uh, for April. The unemployment rate is expected to have held steady at 5.6%, uh, but uh, the employment change is forecast to have slowed to 15,000 from 17.7,000, 17, uh, which, as we already noted, may increase the chances for more quantitative easing by the RBA. Finally, on Friday, during the Asian morning, we have Japan's national CPIs for April. No forecast is available for the headline rate, while the core one is expected to have ticked down to minus 0.2% year over year from minus 0.1%. Later, we have the preliminary PMIs for May from, uh, from the Eurozone, the UK, and the US. 
Eurozone's uh, manufacturing PMI is anticipated to have slid somewhat, but to have stayed at the elevated levels. Specifically, it is expected to have declined to 62.4 from 62.9. The services index is forecast to have increased to 52 from 50.5. This is likely to drive the composite index up to 54.9 from 53.8, confirming that with the vaccinations uh, rollout, the euro area economy is... Um, is recovering from the coronavirus uh, pandemic at a, at a decent pace. Uh, no forecast is available for the UK prints, but um, in the US, the manufacturing index is expected to have ticked down to 60.4 from 60.5 and the services one to 64.6 from 64.7. As for the rest of Friday's releases, we have the UK retail sales for April, Canada's retail sales for March, and the US existing home sales for April. The US retail sales are expected to have slowed somewhat, but to have still increased at a strong rate. Canada's sales are also expected to have slowed, while uh, the US existing home sales are forecast to have risen. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and uh, listening. If you, I hope you have a great uh, weekend. I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 7.30 a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.